To follow along with the written version of this tutorial and download the interactive PDF, use the link on screen now in the description below or by going to clubcrochet.com slash frog. Brip. Hey there, it's Louie and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to crochet these itty bitty frogs. And we're going to be kicking it up a stitch by making this entire pattern without using a darning needle at all, not even for sewing it closed. This pattern is made without sewing any pieces together, and I'm going to show you a special technique for how to sew it closed without even using a darning needle. So we're not even going to touch a darning needle. Well, I mean, we're going to touch it, but we're not going to use it in this video. These are part of my newest creations called the Bonimals. They are uh, crocheted critters that love to stick, stack, and snuggle. My newest ebook teaches you how to make four specific Bonimals and over 12 unique features to make a variety of creatures. Uh, and I'll be updating it soon with additional creatures like this elephant here. We're gonna have, uh, let's see, we got a little beaver that's coming soon and a bunch of other ones. We're gonna do a wolf and cats and stuff like that. So I'm gonna be updating it soon with new patterns as well. You can purchase the ebook at bonimals.com. It's also available with a membership level account to my website, clubcrochet.com, which gives you access to all of our exclusive patterns, including this lily pad addition to this pattern each with a full video tutorial, just like this one, and a downloadable interactive PDF, but we'll talk more about that at the end. Lastly, before we get to the pattern, if you'd like to support this channel, please like and subscribe down below and hit that little bell icon so you don't miss our weekly live crochet alongs, and let me know in the comments what kind of bonimals you would like to see next. All right, well, let's talk about the materials that you're going to need for this pattern. For this pattern, I'm using the following materials. I'm gonna be using worsted weight yarn in 100% cotton. That's my favorite kind of yarn to use for amigurumi. And you will really only need one color necessary for this pattern because you can make the eyes without white. However, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the eyes using white yarn too. So if you want, you'll need one main color and then white for your worsted weight yarn. You'll also need some black thread. Now that's only going to be used for making the little mouth and butt. Oh, that one doesn't have a butt actually. This one's got a butt. There we go. A little butt crack. And uh, for the mouth butt. And then you can also use it for some optional eyes. You can also use black yarn instead. And I'll be explaining that a little bit more when we get to the eyes. You'll need a size G four millimeter crochet hook. Now in this pattern, I have found using a smaller crochet hook down to the three millimeter works really well with our worsted weight yarn as well. If you wanna make sure that you get some detail, I crochet a little bit tighter than most people. So using a smaller crochet hook than me makes sense. You'll also need some scissors, of course, some stuffing. You won't need a darning needle, but if you wanna use a darning needle, it does make it somewhat easier to sew it closed, uh, but I will be showing you this whole pattern without using this at all. Uh, you'll also need some safety eyes. I'm using eight millimeter safety bead eyes in this pattern, although you can use uh, six millimeter safety eyes as well. Here's one I made with six millimeter safety eyes. You can see the difference. These ones are made with eight millimeter. If you'd like to get a bottle of eyes, just like this one here, I have them available in the shop. Um, you can find links for that down below. And then the last thing that you'll need, and you won't really need this, but it does make these characters all stack like this, uh, these little miniature magnets. They're super duper strong. I like using these neodymium magnets. I think that's what they're called. Uh, they're very, very strong. And I personally like using four because I want two in the top and two in the bottom, which lets them stack like this, connect to things like the refrigerator, and you can connect it to another magnet to have it uh, so you can hold it onto your shoulder, which is what I do in a lot of my live stream crochet alongs. If you'd like to get a kit with all the materials that you need, it includes four different colors of yarn to make four different bonimals. It includes the magnets, the uh, black thread, the eyes, everything that you need, even a crochet hook and a darning needle, even if you don't need one. Um, you can find links to that down below or again at bonimals.com. All right, well, for this pattern, we're gonna be taking it relatively slow for complete beginners, but I'll also link to my beginner series down below if you have trouble and need additional help for specific stitches and techniques. And you can use the time codes in the description and at the bottom of this video player to uh, quickly jump to specific parts of the pattern. All right, well, without further ado, let's get hooking and uh, crochet us a frog. 
Okay, so for this pattern, I'm going to be using our worsted weight yarn in green. Um, although, like I said, you can use any color that you want. And we're actually going to start with a magic loop. Now, I do have a tutorial that teaches you how to make different kinds of magic loops. If you don't like this one, I'll link to it right here and in the description. But I will be going through it very briefly how to do the magic loop. All right, so to make the magic loop, you want to pinch the yarn with your middle finger and thumb like this and wrap around your index finger and middle finger simultaneously like that and then back around the bottom and back around the top you want to make an x on the front and two parallel lines on the back just like that and then take this tail end and this end attach the ball of yarn and hold it in the other two fingers right there to keep it in place now you can take your crochet hook have your back of your hand facing you so you have the two parallel lines there and take your crochet hook go under the first bar yarn over the second one and pull that under the first one and then twist it like this to create a loop. Then go over that first bar and yarn over the second one right here. Loop it onto your hook and then pull it through the loop that you made. You might need to scoop it like that. That'll create a chain stitch and you can actually pull it off of your fingers now. Nice and easy. All right, so now that we have this magic loop, when we pull this tail end, it'll pull our end, our loop slow, our close, slower and slower all right i mean i mean tighter and tighter all right so for this pattern we're going to be working into this magic loop now normally i don't use a stitch marker and in fact in this video i probably won't be using a stitch marker simply because uh there are only like 120 stitches total in this whole pattern so it's very very small and easy to make all right so we're going to start with round one for round one, we're going to do six single crochets into the center of this magic loop here. So you want to take your crochet hook and we're going to go into the very center of this magic loop like this. Yarn over with the yarn attached to the ball, of, uh, to the ball hook onto it and pull it through the magic loop like this. And then going over the magic loop, yarn over at the end, attach the ball again, hook it onto your hook and pull it through the two loops that you've made right here. I find it's easiest to really scoop it like this. That way you make sure you don't accidentally pull some threads through instead of just the whole piece of yarn it, uh, itself. All right, that's gonna be called a single crochet. And this pattern is gonna be made almost entirely with these stitches, single crochets. Although we are gonna be using bobble stitches for the eyes and the feet, but don't worry, I'll be showing you how to do those later in this pattern. For round one here, we're gonna do six of these single crochets into this magic loop. So we've got our first one right there. You can see the little V at the top. That's how you can tell you have one stitch on the, on the uh, magic loop. We wanna do six of those. So we're gonna go into the magic loop again, yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it through, going over, yarn over again, and pull through the two loops on the hook for your second single crochet. So there's one, two. We're gonna do six of those into the magic loop through, over the magic loop, pull through two, one and two. There's our third, we want six. Let's do our fourth, pull through, going over, pull through two, one and two. Two more, into the magic loop, yarn over and pull through, over the magic loop, pull through two, one and two. And then one more into the magic loop, pull through, over the magic loop, pull through two, one, and two. All right, now that you have six single crochets onto the magic loop, we're gonna take this tail end and pull it nice and tight, and it's gonna close that hole up, and you'll have all your stitches ready to work with. Okay, now I am gonna use my darning needle here just to show you where you're going to put this crochet hook for beginners, but don't count that against me. We're not gonna be using it to actually sew anything together later. All right, so for the next round, we're going to be doing, uh, basically, we're going to be doing two stitches in each of the stitches that you made in your first round. We're gonna be working in the round without turning. So you're just gonna keep working around in a spiral into each of the stitches that you made. Okay, so most of the stitches here are gonna be single crochets. However, we are gonna be doing bobble stitches for the eyes in our second stitch here and into our, mm -hmm, I think, fifth or sixth stitch right there. So what you want to do is we're going to be working into the top of our stitches right here. You want to work under both of these loops for all of our stitches. And that's going to be the case for almost all of our stitches throughout this pattern. So our first stitch right here, we want to do two single crochets into the same stitch. 
You can find your first stitch by counting backwards from where the loop is coming out. So if you look at this, where the loop's coming out here, and you go under both of these loops here, that's going to be our first one. So if you count back, we got one, two, three, four, oops, five, and six. That's going to be your first stitch that you're going to work into. And we're going to start by doing an increase or two single crochets into the same stitch. That's what an increase means. Two single crochets into the same exact stitch. So we're going to do one increase into our first stitch right here. We're going to yarn over, pull through, yarn over again, going over the stitch, and pull through two for our first single crochet. There's one single crochet into that stitch. Now we want to do another single crochet into that same exact stitch. So we're going to take our crochet hook, go where this, see how it's like got a little arrow pointing down into a stitch? Point your crochet hook right there and pop it in there. Yarn over again, pull through that same exact stitch, yarn over and pull through two, one and two like that. That's going to be two single crochets into our first stitch and our first increase. All right, next up in this next stitch, we're going to do a single crochet into that stitch and then a bobble stitch into that stitch as well. In fact, we're going to be doing something called a mini bobble, which is going to be slightly smaller than a regular bobble stitch. And we're going to be working with white yarn for that stitch. So I'm going to take it very slowly for this stitch because this can be one of the hardest parts of this pattern. Okay, so you want to use get your white yarn prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my white yarn. And we're going to work around this white yarn for our first stitch in the next, or for our first single crochet into this next stitch. Let's go into this next stitch right here. Yarn over with the, with the green, pull through. And then before we finish this stitch up, we want to place our new, our white yarn in between the two loops on the hook and the end attached to the ball like this. And then hold it down with the index finger of our dominant hand, like so. Now we can yarn over with our green yarn, our main color, and pull it under, or pull it through the stitch to finish that single crochet. And now we have our white yarn ready to go for a bobble stitch. You do not need to do this next stitch in white. It's just, if you wanna make your character have bobbly uh, white eyes like this, you're going to need to use your white yarn for that. Although you can get a very cute effect by just doing it all in the same color still, because it's a frog. And that's fine too. All right, so here is going to be our mini bobble stitch. We're going to be working it into the same place that you worked your last stitch into. And I'm going to take it one step at a time. For the mini bobble stitch, we're going to yarn over with our new color, white, just like that. And then we're going to take your crochet hook and go into the same place that you did your last stitch, right here, just like that. And then yarn over with our white yarn again and pull it through that stitch. Now you should have two loops on the hook. Well, three technically with your green one there. But now you want to yarn over with your white yarn going over the stitch and then pull through the two loops on the hook. Just the first two loops. There's one and two. It really helps to do a scoop to make sure you don't accidentally pull through some of the extra threads. I also like pulling my tail end of this white yarn and that kind of tightens that first loop a little bit. Now we're going, going to do three of those total into that same exact stitch. So you see where the light's kind of shining through? You can see my finger point through. We're going to do three of that exact same thing into that stitch. So let's do our second one because we've already done our first. Yarn over with white again. Go through the same exact stitch right where that white yarn is poking through right here. Yarn over again with white and pull it through. Then yarn over going over the stitch and pull through only two of the loops on the hook. Just two. There's one and two. There you go. Okay, so there's our second repeat. We want three of those. Let's do one more. Yarn over with white. Go into the same exact stitch last time. Yarn over again with white and pull it under that stitch. And then going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through just two, one, two, one, and two. There we go. Now you should have four loops total on the hook. If you're doing color changes, you should have three that are white and one that's green. We wanna switch back over to the green. So what I do is I put my index finger in between the two colors and I flip it like this so that my green is on top. Don't flip the other way. In fact, it's really difficult to flip the other way anyhow, but flip it under like so. 
Then we yarn over with our green yarn or whatever main color you're using. And we're gonna pull it through all the loops on the hook. The easiest way to do that is really scoop it because there's a lot going on there. So you really don't wanna accidentally pull one of the other ends through. Okay, so that's gonna be the end of our eye. Now we can pull this white one just a little bit to kind of clean it up a little. And that's going to be the end of our second uh, our second stitch, our, our second, um, our, our fourth stitch, but our second stitch that we've worked into. Okay, so next up, we're going to do an increase into the next two stitches all in green before we get to our next eye. For the first stitch right here, you wanna do a, uh, your first single crochet in your increase, meaning we're gonna do two in the same stitch there. And we want our first one to be around this white end here, and that's gonna hold it into place. So I'm gonna place the white yarn over the stitch like so, take my crochet hook, go under into the next stitch right here, poke it under, make sure you're under both of those loops, yarn over, pull it through that stitch, yarn over again, we're going over that white yarn now, and pull through the two loops on the hook for your first single crochet of your increase here. You just need to do that for the first one, and now we can take that white yarn and place it to the side over to the right. You don't really need to do that. You can keep working around the white yarn like that. However, I find if I pull it to the side and come back to the white yarn later on, you won't see the white thread through the stitches as much, which is really nice. Okay, now to finish up this next increase, we wanna do another single crochet into the same place that you did that last one. That's gonna be right there. See where it's pointing in, and you can kinda of see through it right there. So we're gonna take your crochet hook, go into that same stitch, yarn over with our main green yarn, pull it through, going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. That's gonna be our second stitch in our increase there. We are halfway done with round two. For our next stitch, we wanna do an increase into the next one right here. And after we make our first stitch, we wanna get the white yarn prepared because we're gonna work around it for the next stitch. So first we'll do our first single crochet into this next stitch right here. Yarn over, pull it through the stitch, yarn over again, pull through. There's our first single crochet. Now we wanna do another one in the same exact stitch. We're gonna get it started, go through the next, uh, the same stitch, yarn over with the green yarn and pull it through. And before we finish this stitch up and pull through with green, we'll take our white yarn again, fold it over, give a little bit of space in between and then yarn over with our green yarn and pull it through the two loops on the hook there, one and two. Okay, and now we're prepared for our next eye. For the next stitch, we only have two more to work into, but we only have four stitches total. For the next stitch, we're gonna start with our mini bobble and then we're gonna do another single crochet into the same exact stitch. So first, let's do our mini bobble again. I'll take it nice and slow again, just so that you are, so that you don't get lost. We're gonna do it all in our white yarn, but again, you can just do it in your main color if you'd like to instead. Yarn over with your white yarn. Go into the next stitch right here. Yarn over with white and pull through the stitch with white. Yarn over going over the stitch and pull through only two of those loops. One and two. So we're gonna do, there's our start of our mini bobble. And again, we wanna do three of those total into that same exact stitch. You can see through the stitch there a little bit. We're gonna yarn over again with white. Go into the same stitch right here. Yarn over and pull through going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through just two. One, two. One, and two. There's your second repeat. One more of those. Yarn over into the same exact stitch again, right here. Yarn over again and pull it through. Going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through two. One, and two. There's our third repeat. Again, you should have three, four loops total on your hook, three that are your uh, eye color and one that is the main color of your body. Now we wouldn't want to change over to our green, so I place under both of these. I flip under with the green, yarn over, and I'm gonna pull through all these loops with green, and I'm really gonna scoop it so we don't accidentally pull through one of our stitches. Now we can pull our white just a little bit to clean up that bobble a little bit more. And then the last part of this stitch, we wanna do another single crochet into the same place that you made that bobble stitch. So right here, we wanna do another single crochet in green. So 
we're gonna go into that same stitch, yarn over with our green yarn, pull it through, and we're gonna work around the white yarn here as well, going over, yarn over, and pull through the two loops on the hook, one and two, using a scoop to really make sure it works. Okay, so that's the end of that. We can actually cut our white yarn now. We actually don't need it for the rest of this pattern, which is nice, unless you wanna add things like teeth or something like that. Let it fall to the side. Place our white yarn to the side there. I'm gonna pull this green yarn a little bit to hold it, to pull it a little tighter. And then for this last stitch here, we're gonna do an increase in this last stitch. And I'm gonna work around my green tail end here to help it keep it the center of this stitch closed so it doesn't accidentally open up. So I'm gonna go into this last stitch. We're gonna do an increase into this last stitch, meaning two single crochets. We're gonna pull through and we'll fold it over. We're gonna take this green yarn, fold it over the piece, and we're gonna yarn over, pull through for our first single crochet. Let's do another one. Again, I'm working around this tail end just to keep it locked into place, although you don't really need that. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round two. Now that we have this green yarn locked into place, I'm gonna cut it somewhat closed, not too close, because I don't want it accidentally being pulled through the piece, but just like that's probably fine. We can use this for stuffing later, so I'll pu put it to the side. All right, so that's gonna be the end of round two. Now, I know I said I'm not gonna be using a stitch marker, but I thought about it while I was doing that, and I think, you know what? It's not gonna hurt to use a stitch marker, it's just gonna slow me down a little, but that's okay. So I'm gonna use a little bit of extra yarn here, and I'm going to just take my crochet hook out, and I'm gonna go through the very center of my piece, pull through with our stitch marker, like that, and I'm just gonna fold it over like this, and I'm just gonna ignore that completely as we go through the next round, and this will keep, uh, this will be a good indicator for where the end of the round is, although usually, I don't use stitch markers, but don't tell anybody. All right, let's pull it a little tighter. Okay, so now we're on to round three. We're just gonna ignore that little stitch marker there and pretend that's not there. For round three, we're gonna do three single crochets in a row, and then we're gonna do an increase into the next stitch. The rest of this pattern until we get to round seven is going to be mostly just single crochets with increases uh, uh, throughout the pattern. So uh, we're gonna do three single crochets, and when we do our single crochets, just like our last round, we're gonna work under both of these loops as we're going, okay? So let's start by doing three single crochets. Here's our first one, going under that, yarn over with our green, pull through, and pull through. There's one, into the next stitch here, two, into the next stitch here, will be three, and then into our next stitch, we want to do an increase. Now, this next one's going to be a little weird. You can see how the white is like poking through there. You want to make sure you're only under those green ends. So we're going to go and really poke it under there. Make sure we're only under the green yarn. And in this stitch, we're going to do an increase. So we had three single crochets. And then our increase is going to be this stitch, which means two single crochets into the same stitch. Just like that. You see how we have two into the same stitch there. Okay, next we're gonna do five more single crochets before we get to our next increase. So we're gonna go into the next stitch here and just do a single crochet for five stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, and then five is gonna be uh, the, the bobble stitch right here. So it's gonna be under only those green yarn, green ends. Do a single crochet, there's five. And then into the next stitch after those five single crochets, we're gonna do an increase, meaning two single crochets in the same stitch. It's gonna be one and two. There you go. And then our last two stitches right here, one, two, we're just gonna do a single crochet into those next two. So there's one and two. Okay, and that's gonna be the end of round three. At the end of round three here, you should have 14 stitches around, and I should have been mentioning the stitch count throughout this, and I'm sorry that I haven't been. Um, 
we're, we went up from 12 stitches to 14 in this round. So before this round, at the end of round two, you were supposed to have 12 stitches around, and now you should have 14. To count your stitches, look at the Vs at the top. There you go. We can count back from where our loop is at, actually. We can just count back one, two, three, and there should be 14 all the way around to right here. Okay. Pull it a little tighter. We're going to take this, uh, our stitch marker like this, and we're just going to fold it up just to keep track of our pattern. And we are on to round four. For round four, we're going to do four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then our increase stitch. And then we'll do six, another increase, and then uh, I believe two more single crochets to get to the end of the round. So we're going to start by doing four single crochets working around our little tail in there. There's one, two, three, and four single crochets. One, two, three, four, and then an increase into the next one right here, meaning two into the same stitch. So that's gonna be one and two. Now we're going to do six more single crochets and then another increase. So six single crochets. Go one, two, three, four. There's five and six. And to this, last, in this next stitch here, we're gonna do an increase, meaning two into the same stitch. After your six single crochets, there's an increase, there's one, and then to the same exact stitch right here, it's gonna be two, so there's our increase. Now to finish up round four, we're gonna do two more single crochets, one into the next two stitches. So there's one single crochet in the next stitch, and then one single crochet into the stitch after that. Okay, now you should have 16 stitches around because we increased twice, so we went up from 14 to 16 at the end of round four there. And now we're on to round five. We'll pull our stitch marker up here. There we go. And in round five, we want to start by doing five single crochets, and then we'll do our increase stitch. We're going to increase up to 18 stitches for this round. We're going to start in this first one here, and we're going to do five single crochets. So there's one, two, three, there's four, and then one more right here will be five. And into this next stitch, we'll do an increase. After your five single crochets, we're gonna do an increase or two single crochets into the same stitch. So there's one and two into that same stitch. Next, we're going to do six more single crochets and then another increase. So six single crochets after your first increase. There's one, two, three, four, five, and six single crochets in a row. And then into the next stitch here, we're gonna do an increase stitch. Now, if you're used to, to being able to tell where increases stitches are, here was our last increase. You can see two stitches going into the same spot right there. We uh, Normally they line up, but this time we're doing it right before, so right here. So two single crochets into the same stitch after your six single crochets. There's one and two, okay? And then finish this round up by doing three more single crochets. One single crochet into the next three stitches. So there's one, two, and three single crochets. We can pull our stitch marker up and that will be the end of round five. At the end of round five here, you should have 18 stitches around. If you'd like to count your stitches, there should be 18 total. And 18 is actually the largest stitch count that we're going to need, so we won't be doing any increases for the rest of this pattern. Okay, now we're on to round six, and round six is our nice break. All you need to do for round six is do a single crochet into every single stitch around. Just one single crochet into each stitch, and this is a good chance for you to count your stitches. There should be 18 stitches total. We're just doing one single crochet into every stitch around. Hey, 
If you like this pattern, again, please like and subscribe down below. And if you'd like to share a picture of your um, Bonimal, go, uh, if you post on Instagram with hashtag Bonimals, uh, it will get posted into our little hashtag there. And we actually have a setting now where it's going to show it on our front page and in the live stream crochet alongs. So it's kind of cool. You can also tag the club crochet account. We're at club.crochet on Instagram and at official club crochet on Facebook. And then my personal tag is at Louis loops. That's my personal tag. If you want to tag me as well, um, please do. I would love to see the, the bottomless that you create. Uh, if you make a bunch of frogs, please, please let me know. Uh, it'd be really, really cool to see. And especially because it's going to be, they're going to be put on the, the homepage of the website, which is kind of cool too. Okay. So that's going to be the end of round six. Uh, and at this point now, we actually can pull our stitch marker out. Or, I mean, our loop out a little bit because now we want to add the face. And we want to do a little bit of uh, preparing for our next round, round seven, because that is the probably the most difficult round of this pattern. I know I said the eyes, but round seven, um, rather, is the most difficult, I think. Okay, so we're going to start by making the eyes themselves. So let's go ahead and grab our eyes. I'm going to be using eight millimeter for this pattern. Again, bottle eyes available in the shop now. Uh, they're really cool. I'm really proud of them. We even have the little Club Crochet logo on the top there. And I'm just going to be using two um, in uh, the safety bead eyes that I really like to use other than using the eight millimeter uh, is using these soft ends on the back. They make it way easier. If you want to learn more about safety eyes, I have a video where I explain uh, the best kind of safety eyes to use and stuff. So, yeah. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to add these safety eyes in. You don't need to use safety eyes if you don't want to. You can instead use a um, a some black yarn in a line, which makes it more of like a classic frog look. You can see it there. I did it on this one. Uh, so that is the other option if you want. And then here is what it looks like with our six millimeter safety eyes instead. However, we are going to be making it with our eight millimeter safety eyes, which looks more like this and very adorable. There are a few different places you can put these eyes. You can either make them looking forward like so, which is what I'm going to be doing in this pattern, or you can make them pointing outwards. Let's see, do I have one with me that shows it pointing outwards? Oh yes, this elephant does actually. Here's kind of what it looks like pointing outwards. It looks a lot more derpy, I think, when you make it point outwards. This actually uses six millimeter eyes as well. Um, but there are different ways to make these eyes. You can make them look inside, outside, all around. Okay. All you need to do is you want to take your darning or your crochet hook and you want to look at the top of these eyes. Now I'm going to be facing it down like this. Um, this is going to be the back of your piece. So we want this to be the front. And because we want to make... Uh, our eyes pointing forward, what we want to do is we want to go to this first eye here and we want to count over two stitches, one, two, and in between the, the these two and this last stitch of the bobble stitch, take your crochet hook and just place right in between the two stitches there. See how there's one, two, three, take your crochet hook in between that one, place it right in between there and just really just shove the crochet hook in there and then just kind of like twist it and like stretch it a little bit. And then when you pull the crochet hook out, really try to like outwardly scoop it there. And you see how that leaves just a little bit of a gap? That's going to be used for placing our eye in there. So we're going to take this safety eye, place it right in that open spot. And then I just like to wiggle it like this as it slowly gets placed in the eye. And on the inside there, you can kind of see, see how it's poking through? Uh-oh. See that end? That is something you got to watch out for. You do not want it to accidentally pull some of the yarn. So we're going to have to like get that over like that. But there you go. That's going to be the first eye in just like that. And then the second eye we want pointing inwards. So if we fit, point it upside down here, we're going to have the three on the other side too. We got one, two, three, you kind of see the second and third are a little bit harder to see there, but you want to actually go in between the first and the second instead of the second and the third like we did on this side. So we're going to go into the first two right here, place your crochet hook in that, just really jam it in there and kind of twist it and stretch it a little bit to create a gap. We're going to take the eye, place it in between there and just kind of wiggle it until boop, it goes into place. 
And that is all you need to do for the eyes. Really shockingly simple, right? You can take the back of your darning needle now. I mean, the back of your um, your locking mechanisms for your eyes and just place it on the back of your eye thing there. And just, I'll show you on the inside, just really snap it on like that. We'll do it with this other one as well. Right on the back, just snap it into place. Now, if your eye is looking a little weird, uh, there are ways to fix it. So you kind of see how this one has not that much white on the outside of the eye. This one's got a little bit more. The easiest way to do this is, is with a darn needle, although you can do it with your crochet hook. All you need to do is get under the eye there and kind of like pull a little bit of that yarn under it. And that helps you get the eye in place. You might need your nail to help you like kind of pull it out a little bit. But any kind of adjustments that you need can be made after the fact. So it's kind of nice. The last thing you want to do for this mouth, I mean, for this, uh, for the face here, is we want to add a little bit of black thread for the mouth. So I'm just going to take a little bit of our black thread. You don't need very much. Um, we're going to be using it for the butt as well. Optional, of course. And um, you can use instead black yarn like this. So here's some black yarn. If you want to make some black thread instead, all you need to do is take your black yarn, go to the top of it, and then just pull it apart like this and use two of these ends you, you can use instead of your black thread. It is it is just another option if you'd like to, although I'm going to be using black thread for this. Okay, so to add the mouth, what we're going to do is you're going to take your crochet hook and from the inside out, this is another one where you can use the darning needle if you'd like. We're going to go just to the left of this eye right here in between these stitches. Take your uh, black thread and hook it onto the hook and just pull it through like that. And you just want one of those ends through. And then we're going to pull it out a little bit. You just want enough so that you can double knot it on the inside. And then on the other side right here, so two stitches over, one two right here we're going to come in through the inside again like this take the other end of your black th thread hook it onto the yarn and just pull it on the inside like that and then you have these two ends here that we can just double knot to keep it in place we're going to keep a little bit like try to make it as short as possible because we're going to use the rest of this black thread for the butt crack the butt crack all right we're just going to double knot it like this Nice and close and then we'll cut it nice and close on the inside um, you can just leave it loose and just stuff it with it also if you'd like to but just like that there you go and we have a little straight mouth if you want to make uh, different kinds of mouth uh, you can make a little smile like this all I did was I did this exact thing but instead of tying it close I came out uh, and I, you do have to use a darning needle if you want to make fancy faces like that. But you want to come out through this center here and then go around this, the line, and then pull it back in and then double knot it. It'll make it a bit of a smile. And then you can do something somewhat similar with uh, uh, to make a little like W, like ooh, face, uh, by going through this part and this part and then through the center right there. Um, I show it more in my live stream, so join my live streams if you haven't. Uh, uh, ever join them and ask on the live stream and I'll show you exactly how I do that in those live streams. Okay. But we have our face now and we can continue on in our pattern. Oh wait, sorry. Before we continue on, there's one more thing that you can do. Now, I don't normally do this. I only am doing this for this video. I've actually never done this before, but it will help show exactly where to put the legs for when you're going to be adding those. So what I'm going to do do we want to cut this? No, you know what? We'll use another piece of thread for this. I, I would use this tail end, but it's good, or, or stitch marker, but it's nice to be using for um, keeping track of our end. In our next round, we are going to be adding legs, and the legs are going to be added by, use, by crocheting bobble stitches in a few rounds up. So we're actually going to be doing them into different stitches throughout our pattern up a piece. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and take this tail end and I'm going to use it to demonstrate demonstrate where those legs are going to be done. Okay, the first place is, and I'm going to be going through this as if these were not there when we do the next round, but the next round can be kind of complicated, so it's nice to know. 
The first place is this increase stitch right here. So if you go right under this eye, we're gonna be working a stitch right into that stitch. So what I'm gonna do is, you can see how it's kind of an increase right there. I'm gonna take my crochet hook in there, yarn over with this end of yarn, and just pull it through. And we're just gonna keep track of that, just like that. The next place is if we go from that over and we go over, we're gonna do a stitch there and then the next one's gonna be right here. So if you wanna count over, that's one, two, and then one up right there. That's where the next leg's gonna go. And again, you do not need to do this at all. In fact, I've never done this before, but I just thought, oopsies, let me get the first one going. But I just thought this would be a nice way to really illustrate it for the video. I'm gonna pull it out just a little bit. Those are the two spots for that side of the leg. I'm gonna cut this close and we're gonna do it, show you on this other part as well. The next one is gonna be right where this increase is. So again, if you wanna look really close here, you'll see two stitches, one, two, three, four, two stitches going into the same stitch right there. Normally stitches look like this where there's only one, but this one's got an increase. That's where our first leg's gonna go. I mean, our last leg actually. We're gonna pull that end in. And then if we count over, we wanna go over, let's see, one and then up one right here. That's gonna be where the last bit of the leg is. Let me just make sure. Yes, right there. So if you count over from that increase, you go over one and then up one, it's gonna be right here. So I'm gonna pull this other tail end through our piece. And again, I know I've said this a million times, but you do not need to do this. In fact, I never do this. I'm just showing you so that you can get some really good illustration of where those legs are going to get sewn into. All right, so we're going to ignore those completely and pretend those aren't there, but it's just nice to have. And we're going to work on to round seven. Now, round seven is the hardest part of this pattern. So take this part really nice and slowly. Um, all we're going to be doing is it's mostly single crochet stitches. However, you will be adding uh, bobble stitches into... Um, these weird spaces that I just showed you. So we're gonna start by doing six single crochets just into the regular stitches, just like normal. So six single crochets, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So there's our first six single crochets. Next up, we're going to do a bobble stitch, a full bobble stitch. For our eyes, we did mini bobbles, but for this one, we want a full on bobble stitch, which is gonna be one extra step than we did with the eyes. And we're gonna work into where this end is coming out, which is two rounds up. So normally we work into this stitch here, but we're gonna work one, two rounds up. So all the way up to there. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this end out a little bit. So you can kind of see where it's gonna go, right there. And we're gonna get that yarn out of there so it doesn't accidentally get pulled through. Okay, so we're gonna go into that stitch there. Okay, I've kind of opened it up a little bit. But we're gonna do a bobble stitch into that stitch. So what we wanna do is we wanna yarn over with the end attached to the ball, just like this. Then go two rounds up. Keep good tension here. You need to keep good tension because this part can be tricky. So keep good tension, go two rounds up. There's our first two, boo, right there. Yarn over with the end attached to the ball, pull it through that loop, and then give it a little bit of space. So give it there a little bit more space there. And then going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull it through only two of these loops. One and two. Really try to make sure you scoop so you don't accidentally pull, uh, th uh, thread your yarn by accident. So you want to do that four times total. So there's our first time. Let's do a second one. Yarn over into the same exact stitch right here. Yarn over and pull through, pull it through that stitch, give it a little bit of space, going over, yarn over, oops, with this a 10 end, attach the ball, and pull it through only two. One, two. All right, there's our second repeat, four of those. Let's do our third, yarn over into the same stitch, yarn over and pull it under, going over it, yarn over and pull through two one and two. There's your third. One more. Yarn over into the same stitch. You can really see it getting pulled out now right here. 
yarn over and pull under, give it some space, going over the stitch, yarn over, oops, and pull through two. One, two. We're scooping to make sure we don't accidentally mess it up. And then to finish up this bobble stitch, we're going to yarn over and pull it through all the loops on the hook. There should be five total. One, two, three, four, five. Pull it through all of them. Scoop. Really do a scoop so you don't accidentally mess it up. And that will be the first leg done. That is a pretty clean one too. Usually they're not as clean as that, but that's okay. Honestly, um, I find that these legs look really good uh, when they can get a little messy even. All right, so we did our first leg. Now we wanna do a, a single crochet into the top of our next stitch. So right here, just like normal, we just wanna do one single crochet between legs. So just one single crochet into the next stitch. Okay. And then that's going to be stitch A or our first, I mean, leg A, which is going to be our first leg. Now we want leg B. Leg B is going to be one round up. So where our last leg was two rounds up, one, two, two, our last leg was into this round. This next leg is going to be into this round right here. Luckily, we've pulled this little loop there to uh, keep us notified of where it's going to be, but it's going to be right there. And we're going to do the exact same thing that we did with this leg. We're going to yarn over and then go into that stitch. I'm gonna pull this out like that. Go into that stitch right here. Yarn over and pull it through that stitch. We're doing a full bobble stitch. Yarn over, going over the stitch and pull through only two, one and two. And we wanna do that four times total. Let's do our second repeat. Yarn over into the same stitch. Yarn over, and pull it under. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull it through one and two, there's two, we want four, yarn over, into the same stitch, yarn over and pull through, going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two, one, two, and then one more, yarn over, going into the stitch right here, yarn over and pull it under, you're going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through two, one, two, okay. Now you should have five loops on the hook, and finish up that bobble stitch by yarning over, pulling through all the loops on the hook. We're gonna scoop it so we don't goof it up by accident. There we go. There's our second leg. We only have two more legs over here to do. Let's get this little end out of here. We can use it to stuff up a little later. Okay. Next up, we wanna do three single crochets to get to our next leg. So just three single crochets into the top of our stitches, just like a normal single crochet. So one, two, and three. Okay. All right, so we've got leg A and B done, three single crochets, and then we want to do leg C. Leg C is gonna be in the same round as leg B, so it's gonna be one round up. So instead of working into right here, we're gonna work one round up into right here. So uh, I'm gonna pull this just enough so that that end gets out. Yarn over. We're not gonna go into right here. We're gonna go into one round up right here into that stitch, yarn over at the end, attach the ball, pull it under, and going over the stitch, yarn over, and pull through just two, one, and two. And this is going to be another full bobble stitch. We want to repeat that four times total. Yarn over into the same exact stitch right here, yarn over and pull it under, going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two, one, and two. Notice how I'm keeping a really nice tension, which is gonna keep our legs really clean and crisp. Yarn over into the same stitch. Yarn over and pull it through. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two, one, and two. One last one, yarn over into that same stitch right here. Yarn over and pull it through. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two, one, and two. Oopsies, see how I'm not all the way through that? It's because I didn't scoop it as well as I should have. Just gonna really make sure we're under all of that. Now to finish up this third bobble stitch, we're gonna yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook, scooping so we don't accidentally goof it up. And there you go. There's our third leg, AKA leg C, if you're following along in the written pattern. Next, we're going to do a single crochet into the next stitch right here. It's kind of hard to get to this one. It's kind of just like right under. Make sure you're just under the top. It's just a normal single crochet though, into the top of the stitch like that. Pull through, yarn over, pull through two. 
last leg through this stitch right here that it's going through, that's two rounds up. So that's gonna be, there's where we normally do a single crochet, but we're gonna do it one, two rounds up right here. We're gonna do that same bobble stitch. Yarn over, into there, all the way down. Yarn over and pull it under. Going over the stitch, all the way up. Yarn over and pull through two. One, two. Four of those total. Yarn over, into that same stitch. Yarn over and pull it through. Giving it some room. Going over the stitch, yarn over and pull through two. One and two. There's two, we want four of those. Yarn over, into that same stitch. Going under, yarn over, pull under. Going over the loop, yarn over, pull through two, one, two. One more of those, yarn over, all the way down to here. Yarn over and pull it under it. Going over it, yarn over, and pull through two, one, and two. Okay, now you have our last five stitches on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on the hook, doing that scoop so we don't goof it up. All right, that's the last leg done. You can see how our legs are kind of coming together there. And to finish up this round, round seven, our hardest round, you just want to do three single crochets, one into the next three stitches. The first one can be kind of hard to see because it's a little bit under this leg, but it's going to be right here. If you're having a hard time finding that stitch, count over from the back. So this is going to be our last stitch. You can tell because of our stitch marker. Thank goodness I did that. We want one, two, three right here. So we want three single crochets to get to the end of the round. So we'll go under right there, yarn over and pull it through. Going over, yarn over and pull through two. There's one, two, and three. Okay, we're gonna pull our stitch marker up like this. And that's gonna be the end of round seven. All right, we're just about done now. We only have a few more pieces to go. Let me get my yarn a little untangled here. It got tangled up in some random bits. Again, if you haven't yet, please like this video down below. It really helps support this channel. And if you're not subscribed yet or, uh, already, subscribe, what are you doing? Subscribe to the channel. We make cool patterns like this all the time. All right, so for our last, or our second to last round, round eight, we're going to do a single crochet into the first stitch and then something called an invisible decrease into the next stitch. You can do any kind of decrease you want. I just really like doing invisible decreases because they're the least noticeable decrease. If you want to learn more about decreases, I have a whole video tutorial on that. All right, so we're going to do first a single crochet into the next stitch, into our first stitch right here. So one single crochet. And then we're going to do an invisible decrease. So for an invisible decrease, instead of going under both loops like how we normally do, we're only going to go under the front loop, just this first one right here. And you want to go under this front loop and this front loop at the same time. One, two. How I like to do that is I take my crochet hook, point up from the bottom, and go straight up. Boop. That's how to get under the first front loop. And then I loop my crochet hook under like this, get prepared under the next front loop, and go up. And it's the easiest way I find to get through both of them. Then you want to yarn over and pull it under those two front loops. Easiest way, of course, is to really do a scoop and then finish up an invisible decrease by yarning over and pulling through these last two loops on the hook. One, two, just for like a single crochet. So you're essentially doing a single crochet only under two front loops instead of just under one regular stitch. So we're gonna repeat that process of doing a single crochet and then an invisible decrease six times total, six repeats of that. And that'll go all the way around, which is gonna bring us down from 18 stitches down to 12 stitches around. So you're only, uh, you're only gonna have 12 stitches at the end of this next round. So we're gonna do a single crochet into the next one right here. One single crochet, this is our second repeat. There's our single crochet. Now an invisible decrease, we go front loop, flip over and get into the next front loop. And then we're gonna do a single crochet. We're really gonna scoop to make sure we're under both of those. Yarn over and do another scoop like that. There's two. Okay, so that's our second repeat. Here's our third single crochet one. Invisible decrease one. So we go front loop only. Twisting around, front loop only. This next front loop's a little hard because it's a one of the bobble stitches, but really try to make sure you're only under that first front loop there. And then we're gonna do our single crochet. Okay, a few more. Single crochet one under both loops. 
invisible decrease under the front loops of the next two stitches. So front loop, twist around, front loop, single crochet. Just a few more, single crochet one, invisible decrease, front loop, front loop, single crochet. Okay, last repeat, single crochet into the next stitch right here, and then invisible decrease, front loop, flip around, front loop, single crochet. Okay. That's going to be the end of round eight. We only have one more round to go. Before I get to our last round of this pattern, again, if you haven't liked and subscribed, we'll do that, blah, blah, blah. But before we get to that, we want to stuff our piece up a little bit. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull almost all of our stitch markers out all the way from the top like this. We're just going to, I'm just going to get them out. And this is because I don't want, we're going to be stuffing it with our magnet in there. And I don't want my magnet to get, to trap our yarn. So I'm just pulling my stitch markers almost all the way out, just like that. Now, the first thing I like to do when I'm uh, making my bonimals is I'm putting a magnet in the top. You do not need to do this. Um, this is completely optional. It's just what I like to do. Now, the thing about these magnets is, well, first off, I like to use two of them. So use two of these magnets and I'm just gonna place it all the way, just drop it in there and just really push it up against the top of our piece. Try to get under those eyes if you can. Now, if you've made bonimals before, you'll have already done this before, and therefore you wanna make sure that the bonimals can stick together. So you wanna make sure that this magnet's polarity is the right direction. So what I like to do is just place another bonimal in place, make sure that it sticks to the bottom of the bonimal and it pushes away from the top. So there it's kind of, you can't see it obviously, but it is pushing away from the top of the bonimal as well. And so that way I can make sure that the polarity is correct. If it's not correct, I flip the magnet over on the inside of my bonimal to make sure it's correct. Then I wanna take two more of these magnets that we're gonna to use to stuff into the bottom. I'm just gonna let it go and let it connect to that other one and just hold it into place. So that's just gonna hold that magnet there. Now we can stuff up our piece. You don't need to stuff it too much. Um, we wanna save this black thread. We don't wanna stuff it with that. But I'm gonna start by stuffing it with some of our ends so we don't have to just make more waste. And then I'm gonna stuff it up with some regular old stuffing as well. You don't need to stuff it up very much at this point. In fact, that's more than enough because the more stuffing you put in at this point, the harder it's gonna be to do our last round. And we will have another chance to stuff it just a little bit after our next round. Okay, that's gonna, I think that's more than enough stuffing. You can see how it's really, we got it prepped. Okay, last round, get our crochet hook in there. For our last round, we are going to do an invisible decrease into every stitch all the way around. That's it. That's all you need to do. Six invisible decreases total. We're just going to go into the front loop only, flip around, front loop only, and then do a single crochet. There's one. We want six of those. Front loop, front loop, single crochet. There's two. And as it gets smaller here, it's easiest just to hold it in place like this. Get my crochet hook ready and go front loop, front loop. I'm really pointing up from the bottom and just making sure that I'm only under the front loop and then do our single crochet. I think that is three, three more, front loop, front loop. Now I'm kind of pinching it to get our stitches into the perfect position for my crochet hook, front loop, front loop, single crochet, and then one last one, front loop, front loop, and single crochet. All right, now you can cut the yarn. We just need enough to sew it closed and just pull it all the way through like that. The last thing we wanna do is stuff it just a little bit more and make sure this magnet is stuffed on the, in, on the inside. Um, I'm going to start by taking this thread out like that and we're going to stuff it with this thread first just so that we don't have any waste like that. If the back of your crochet hook's not working very well, try using a little tiny stick like this. It makes it even easier. 
I always keep a little stick ready just in case. Just like that. And then we're gonna add just a little bit more stuffing on the bottom, just a little bit more to fill in all the cracks. Try not to make sure you stuff it too much. The more you stuff it, the harder it's gonna be for it to magnetically attach to things because it'll be a little bit heavier. So just don't overstuff it. Also, if you overstuff it, you're gonna start to see your stuffing through your piece and nobody wants that. You don't want that. This magnet's a little off, you know, because I kind of want it more in the middle, but it's like kind of pulling off to the side. That's not really a problem, but if you want to move it around, now's your chance. Actually, you could do this a little later as well. But yeah, that's a little bit, that's a little bit better. All right, now the last thing you want to do before we sew it closed is you want to take this magnet. Do not flip it if you're adding these magnets. Don't flip it around because we want to make sure that it'll stick to the bottom of another bottom hole. So I'm going to pull it off and keep it facing that way and place it right on the inside. Make sure that it's facing down like that. Okay, so you can see it right there on the bottom. All right, the last thing we want to do is sewing it closed. Now, normally I'd use a darning needle for this, but we're not going to be using darning needle in this pattern. We've already made it all the way through. We don't need to do it now. All you need to do, take your crochet hook, and we're going to go and pull this end through the front loops of all the stitches around, and then pull it tight. So what I like to do is pointing from the inside out, go under the front loop only of the next stitch right here, only under that front loop, yarn over with this end, and pull it under, like that. And we're just gonna do that for each stitch around. Pull it over, go into the next front loop right here, yarn over, and pull it through. Just two, three, next one right here, four, Two more, front loop only, five, and then this last one right here will be six. And then go from the inside somewhere. I usually like to do it on the back just in case I mess it up a little bit. In through that one, really make sure you're hugging the bottom of this so you don't accidentally go and mess up that magnet. Yarn over with that end, pull it in through the center, and then out through that stitch, and then pull it just nice and tight, and it'll close that bottom up. Now we can just cut the end nice and close. And there we go, that's how you sew it closed. The very last thing that I like to do for my bottom holes is add a little butt. <laughs> Again, this is something that's a little easier to do with the darning needle, but it's okay, we don't need it. What I like to do is go through from the side of our piece and come out somewhere on the back, like right here, yarn over with the thread and pull it through and out that stitch. And then through the same stitch that you went out with this one, go in somewhere on the bottom, pull through that thread and pull it out through the same space, just like that. And then we'll just double knot them, cut it close and stuff it in. There's one and double knot. Now we can cut the yarn nice and close, just like that. And honestly, we can just probably squish it and yeah, it'll hide in there. And there we go, we got a little butt on there. Thank you so much for crocheting this little bonimo along with me. If you like this video, again, please like and subscribe down below and consider becoming a club crochet member. Members get early access to future patterns, just like this one. They get exclusive access to the full library of patterns, which include all of these additional bonimo patterns, which you can find at bonimos.com for purchase or with a membership. And there's a bunch of different other kinds of bonimos that we will make. My favorite, I think, is the little bunny. I mean, look at that bunny. It's so cute. But yes, I'm really proud of these guys. I really hope you like it. Again, thank you so much for crocheting along with me. If you have a membership, I'm also going to continue recording right now, and I'm going to be teaching how to make a lily pad. Um, but that's going to be a membership-exclusive pattern. But yes, thank you so much again for watching. Check out more Bonimals at bonimals.com. Uh, or at clubcrochet.com slash bonimals and uh, make sure to post a picture of your bonimal with hashtag bonimals. Let me know in the comments if you uh, what I what other bonimals I should make next. A lot of people have been suggesting stuff like a raccoon. Um, people were suggesting the elephant, but then I made one, so they liked that a lot. Uh, so yeah, make sure to 
to uh, let me know what kind of bottles you think I should make in the description. And uh, I'll see you in the live stream crochet longs if you're going to be joining that. All right. Pasta la pizza and happy hooking. Bye. Rubber. 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 Rubber.